Is Hendrik Verwut even worth debating in 2019? And do smaller parties have anything to offer voters on May 8th, in 50 days when South Africa heads to the polls? The Politburo is now in session. I'm Nicolas Barr, connecting the dots for you this Sunday. In the Politburo today... First up, a documentary about land reform paints apartheid architect Hendrik Verwut in a favorable light. 42 years after he was assassinated in Parliament by Dimitri Tsefendis, his legacy is explained in quite a bizarre way by AfriForum. Let me show you what I'm talking about and you be the judge. We should, well now, we, now many people say that Verwut is the architect of apartheid, but it's a very simplistic way of looking at Verwut. I think Verwut was a philosopher. He had an ideal that he wanted to reach, and this ideal was to establish a country that was very much like Europe, the makeup of different countries with borders next to each other, but who had different cultures, different languages, and in each country people could develop along their own lines. And Verwut had the same dream for South Africa. He wanted to enable the different groups in South Africa to be governed by their own people, to study in their own language and develop along their own lines of their own cultures. So for Wood's idea was not necessarily to separate the races because he saw one group as inferior to the other. He wanted to separate the races because he wanted them to be able to develop to their utmost potential within their own community. That bizarre snippet is from a documentary created by African rights organization, AfriForum. Many say it sanitizes and justifies apartheid. Well, we all know what apartheid was, and this is why it was declared a crime against humanity in the United Nations in 1971. AfriForum, the creators of the documentary, have argued for what's controversial portrayal is vital in providing historical context to South Africa's current state of affairs, in particular around the issue of land. Not surprising, social media was abuzz with fury and in studio. Now we have AfriForum's deputy CEO, Ernst Rutz, to discuss just this. So, Ernst, in response to the furore, you've said that this documentary is about much more than for Vut, but surely the way you've depicted a man that implemented a system that subjugated black people through legislation, you'd be expecting this reaction. Maybe this is even the reaction you wanted. Well, I wouldn't. Well, yes, we did expect this reaction. Um, and. I think it's important to see that particular section in context because in the documentary it is also clearly stated more than once, I think about four times, that the dispossessions that took place as a result of Verwurt's ideas were an injustice and have to, those, injust those injustices have to be corrected. So we need to see it within that context. And if you look at that section, for example, it was said Verwurt's idea was the following. Now we can be angry about that, about pointing out what Verwurt said his idea to be, but it's important if we want to learn from history. We need to acknowledge the complexity so, so of it. So are you essentially saying that it was a noble idea that got implemented wrongly? Well, if you read the speeches of Verwurt, I think you can make that conclusion. I think it's more complicated than even that, than even to say, no, it was just a noble idea that got implemented wrongly. But Verwurt, uh, on many occasions, was described as one of the most powerful politicians in pre-democratic history. So are you mm. suggesting that his system that he put together, that he tried to implement, was just implemented the wrong way and he was powerless to, to, to uh, implement it properly? No, well, it's, it's more complicated than that. I think the question that Verwurt dealt with, that we also need to de deal with currently, and Verwurt's predecessors as well, was how do we deal with a country that's so diverse with so many different languages and cultures and so forth? And his idea was, and that's what we say in the documentary, let's give everyone their own piece of land. Now we can say, we can say well, that obviously failed, and we shouldn't try to do that again, or we can say that we, and we can say that we need to learn from those lessons. But the, the danger here is if we reduce history to this very singular one-dimensional narrative, where even pointing out what Verwurt's idea was is problematic. Mm. If we do that, we're not going to properly learn from history. So, okay, let's talk about this federal system that the documentary attempts to explain as the reason behind Verwurt's uh, ideas on apartheid. Uh, South Africa was to be like Europe according to the documentary, self-governing tribes developing on their own terms, whatever interpretation you have of mm. that. Uh, uh, it just seems puzzling that the black areas in this federal system was largely to be found in arid regions with little to no resources, and areas within white South Africa had countless ghettos which provided cheap, uneducated labor to mm. whites. Yeah, that was a problem. That didn't, it didn't work. It failed. That's why the system failed. So. Why is there a big fuss if, 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 if you agree with the fact that apartheid was wrong? Uh, many are arguing that you're just trying to revise history and describe apartheid as a woolly concept. Yeah, I think the, the point is this. This is something that 
that I think Afrikaners in particular are still grappling with. Because I know many people, I knew people who worked for the apartheid government, and I know people who did who are still alive. Mm -hmm. And those people are not evil. And now you have to ask the question, if this was such an evil system, why are these people not evil? Or are they actually evil, but they're trying to hide it? And I think that the answer lies in the complexity of what happened. And we can say that a lot of evil things di happened during apartheid, and we should say that, and we should acknowledge that. But we need to try and understand what happened, because if you try to understand, then we can learn from it more comprehensively. The 1973 Convention by the United Nations on apartheid declared it as a crime against humanity. Uh, mm. Some may argue even now that you're trying to sanitize the role that people played in the implementation of apartheid. We argued also after World War II that there were still people that uh, operated within the Nazi system that operated in West Germany post-World War II. It doesn't excuse the fact that World War II happened, that Nazi Nazism was an evil system, and neither should an excuse that apartheid was an evil system too, and there were people that implemented it, not certainly against their will. Y yeah, well, I'm not sure what the question is there, but I think if the, if the question is were, were there evil people, yes, they were. Did evil things happen? Yes, it did. Uh, did injustices happen that need to be corrected? Yes, it, that's certainly the case. But we also need to, we need to acknowledge the complexity of what happened. And in, tr in, in trying to acknowledge the complexity is not trying to deny what happened or trying to justify what happened. It's an attempt to learn more creams, more comprehensive. So it's not historical revisionism? No, no, it's not. It's historical revisionism, revisionism to say that you cannot say what Verwurt's intention was. That's okay. historical revisionism. So let's move away from the allegation that you're trying to whitewash apartheid. Let's talk about land reform. Mm -hmm. You refuse the fact that apartheid, under apartheid, there were forced removals. The 1913 Native Land Act made it illegal for black people to own land in South Africa. No. There remains an historical injustice true. in South Africa. That's not true. Based on land. That's not true. How is the it true? The the, did you read the 1913 Land Indeed. Act? Indeed. The 1913 Land Act said that there were certain sections in which only white people are allowed to own property and certain, certain sections in which only black people were allowed to own property. It's not true that the 1913 Land Act made it impossible or said no black person is allowed to own property. That's not true. The Burman Commission was put together by a white government to look at the state of land affairs in mm. South Africa in the early uh, 20th century. Mm. It was put together by white people, executed by white people, some may argue yeah, for white purposes. So how can you argue almost 100 years, over 100 years from the fact mm. that this wasn't subjugation of black people by white people, even before there was a legalized system called apartheid? Well, I'm not sure what the point is about the Bowman Commission. I don't know who was on, I don't know what the race was of the people, but let's assume they were white. Why? I'm, I'm not sure what the argument there is. What I'm basically asking you here is, Ernst, 25 years after uh, apartheid officially came to an end and in the birth of democracy, mm. why, why are we even discussing the legacy of Favut? I thought it was just generally accepted that Hendrik Favut was the architect of apartheid and had implemented a system that subjugated black people. There, there are some politicians across the globe and particularly in South Africa who are very, I shouldn't say very, but who are easier to understand. And then there are some who are much more complicated. No, Thabo Mbeki was a, was a very complicated person. And I think we should point out, for example, as atrocious as Thabo Mbeki's policy on HIV AIDS was, it was complicated. He had some complicated things going on in his head when he, when he, when he made certain decisions in that regard. The same could be said. Hendrik Verwoerd was a very complicated person. If you compare him to others, to other national party leaders like John Forster and so forth. And we need to, we need to ensure that those injustices that happened are not repeated. And we curtail the lessons that we learn from history if we reduce history to a singular one-dimensional narrative. We will learn more from history if we try to understand, if we try to understand from their perspective, and then we try to understand how, how did this go wrong, and how can we ensure that this doesn't happen again. That, I think that's what we ought to do. So, as a final question I ask for you then, will you accept that apartheid was declared a crime against humanity by the UN, and as such, that should be our departure point, not a fact that maybe was a complicated compl a concept introduced mm. during a complicated time by a very complex man. <laughs> well, uh, Afri Forum has never denied that apartheid was declared a crime against humanity by the UN. It was declared a crime against humanity. Afri Forum has come under f criticism for expressing concern that the definition of a crime against humanity is not applied consistently, that it is argued today that communism sh is not a crime against humanity, despite the fact that it killed 100 million people. So, yes, it was declared a crime against humanity, and we shouldn't go back to... to Surely, apartheid. though, I mean, consistently the lessons trying, to, trying to place uh, apartheid within the context of a global reading of communism is just what about you? Why is this what about you? Communism was a reality in South Africa as well. 
it's not what about to, to, to ask for consistency, to, to ask for consistency in the application of certain definitions. And that's the problem that we have in South Africa. And that's a problem with, we, that we have with, with a, a perspective or an evaluation of history in South Africa. We need to point out what happened, what happened. And we need to point out that those were injustices and those injustices have to be corrected. But if that's the end of the story and you're not allowed to say anything other than that, then we are curtailing the lessons that we learn from history. Owen Stritz from Afri Forum on Politburo this morning. Coming up, the majority of the world's oldest democracies have no more than three parties. So why does South Africa see the need for a multi-party system?